Hey guys and welcome back to Azuru Plays Coffee Talk. If you're new here make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and if you like the content on my channel I would really appreciate that. Today's the next day. I just want to say that the 2nd of October was everything I could ask for. That was literally like the best day. It was like what my birthday day and it was Lua and Bailey's game together. We had a little gala drama like oh my god like the tea in this coffee shop is real. Um, I'm really excited to see what is going to happen, whether we're going to have a closing arc for Gala. I'm assuming that was meant to happen. I felt like the story was building up towards it, so we were expecting something to end. Weird Sand Company criticised for unfair deceptions of Werewolf in their latest box hit office. Catchella 2020 do's and don'ts, Atlantic Ambassador in talks with Fire regarding immigration. Welcome. Good evening, Brea. Oh. Hi. When was the last time you slept? <laughs> I still sleep like a normal person, you know. I slept for six hours last night. No, I've slept for six hours this week. That's not healthy. Get some rest, really. I can rest when it's done. That's stupid. Oh, shut up. So, what's your plan now? Now, as in right now at this moment? I'm planning to go to the bathroom and wash my face. I need to make sure I don't look like a dead woman walking. And after that, I'll continue writing. Freya. Oh, well. You know where the bathroom is? Okay, I need something to drink. But before we do that, we are just going to do a quick update. So we saw Gala. He came in to our coffee shop while he was in Fury. So he is someone who works in the hospital and he's a veteran. His favourite food is anything warm and made up with ginger. His favourite music is Metal Maiden and books are for Metal Jarhead. Trying to heal myself by helping other people heal. That's really nice and that's it in terms of that. Ooh, that's a nice profile picture. Wow. That is so nice. Literally in love. These things are so good. Has she changed hers? No, she's still writing. I was looking at um, Freya's. Fortunately, we've had a new addition to our little barista situation. So that's quite good. We have quite a few left. Not a lot of people drink tea, the green tea. These are milk based drinks. I have not yet tried one of those. Um, we're going to do the evening whispers first. This is quite a long story. Yep, like last time. So, without further ado, let's get back into it. And I'm going to try and speed read this as fast as I can. Happily ever after, ever after, ever after. It doesn't happen the next time Romeo and Juliet meet. When Romeo sees her, he knows something isn't right. After that, each time he sees her, he feels uncomfortable, almost afraid. Our hero isn't scared of much, but he can't explain how she makes him feel, as though she's surrounded by a fierce, powerful aura that keeps him from approaching. It takes a few days for whatever it is to fade. When that sense of danger finally eases up, Romeo finds that he has the courage to approach her. Kindly, he waits until the end of the night class when both of them are ready to go home. Hey Jules, are you ready to head back? Let me drive you home. No, it's fine, I'll just call Nuba. I, uh... I have something I need to tell you though. Her expression quickly changes to one Romeo has never seen before. An uncomfortable looking mixture between happy, sad and angry. He said he finds he doesn't know what to call it. She appears she appears at him. What is it about? It's about uh, you know, the thing I told you a few months ago? A slight smile he saw when he first confessed his feeling returns to her face. Okay, let's go for a drive. I know a good place to talk. Juliet redirects Romeo sporadically and they chat normally to fill the intervening time until they reach what she reveals to be their destination, a dark, a large dark empty park. Huh, I didn't know there was a park around here. You know nothing, Romeo. Hey, what? You say you don't read or watch Game of Thrones. She side-eyes him. It's all over the internet, my dude. Good point, well made. Our heroes climb over the lock gate and mender slowly um, along the paths until they find a bench. And an unspoken decision has them both sit down at the same time. By this point, it's close to midnight. The drive had been long and he's driven slower than usual to stretch out their time together. 
The sky is bright with stars while the full moon hangs heavy on the horizon. A warm and gentle breeze brings with it the, sweat, the scent of wet earth and green growing things and far distant clouds tease them with the idea of rain before morning. It is Romeo feels perfect as though God has created it especially for them and at this moment. So, says Juliet, lowering her gaze from the milky splash of stars above them to meet his eyes. What do you want to talk to me about? And Romeo thinks, what the hell? And jumps right in. I told you I liked you. Do you remember? Yes. It was a lie. Her eyes narrow. What do you mean? Oh, careful dear Romeo, you should not play with a woman's heart. I still like you. I never stop liking you and every day I like you more and I don't think I can go another day without telling you how I feel. Oh, I know. His jaw snaps shut and he blinks rapidly. It's not what he thought she would say. What? Is it that obvious? No, but it was kind of easy to guess. Ah, uh, okay, so yeah, there's there's that and. You know when I first told you how I felt, I thought it would help me clear my head. I wanted it to, but since then it's haunted me. Why did I want that? Why did I want that? I think of you and I want to see you. I see you and I want to talk to you. He continues laying all the bare things he's been thinking of these of these past few weeks, culminating in an impassioned plea. I know it probably won't end well, but I want to try to be with you. I want us to try. Juliet takes his hand and squeezes it and feels a tremble in his fingers and says nothing about it. Romeo, I like you, she begins, and his heart near, nearly bursts. I like you a lot, and not only as a friend, but you know that. With our backgrounds and our families, it's impossible for us to be together. I know that, Juliet. I know. I know. But still... I really like spending time with you. Whenever I talk with you, I feel so happy and so scared. Why would you feel scared? Because I don't want to say anything that will make you think less of me. I want to look perfect in front of you, even though whenever we're together, it already feels like I can only show all of my imperfections. Hey, nobody's perfect. They sit quietly for a moment, till holding, still holding hands. Romeo stares at the inter intertwined fingers while Juliet watches the breeze ripple through the trees. It still feels weird, I uh, heroin muses I was about to say heroin <laughs> wow um, it feels weird our hero a heroine muses almost to herself you told me that you liked me and I thought it would never work and then you said the same and I was disappointed somehow and now there you are telling me to forget about the rules and I'm saying they're important oh tell me about it I don't even know where this is all coming from you don't know what I you don't know what I like and I don't no, I don't like what you like. You don't like what I like and I don't like what you like. And please don't get me started on the fact that your book is the worst single thing I've ever read. You mean the secret? Yes, oh god, please let's not talk, talk about that now, okay? She tilts her head back and laughs and Romeo remembers that he used to hate that sound a long time ago. Okay, let's not talk about it. But if you know that a relationship won't go well, why do you keep telling me how you feel? Why don't you just try to forget me I've tried he sighs squeezing her hand gently but every conversation with you is enough to make me remember that you mean so much to me you don't listen to explosions in the sky but you are what I think about whenever I do you didn't play video games as much as me but you're on my team is what I, is what I want the most whenever I play a multiplayer game I pray to different gods and your face is the one that appears whenever I pray for a good future Juliet doesn't say anything she just looks into his eyes while listening to everything he's been keeping in his head and his heart for a long time before this I always thought that when I fell in love with someone it would be a person that I wanted to grow old with do I want to grow old with you no I don't want to do that but do I want to be with you here in this moment stuck in eternal limbo in an infant loop of this exact hour forever hell yeah I do neither Romeo and Juliet speak for some time after that they just keep staring at each other they don't know what it is, but they surely feel something strange. Something magical is happening between them now. A delicate thing which twists in the air around them, young and oh so fragile. Do you love me? Juliet asks quietly. I'm not sure, Romeo answers, but if it's not love, then I don't know what it is. But if it is love, why do you not want to grow old with me? Because it's just love. You're such a weirdo. I don't know why I fell in love with you, Juliet says. Right in that moment, Romeo feels joy in his heart, a tsunami of happiness sweeping through his body, destroying all the baggage that has been messing with his head and his heart for so many months. But then reality hits as a, suddenly as the joy. 
Everything happens in a single instant. In just one moment, Romeo feels the great happiness and the great sadness he's ever felt in his life. Hey, I might not be worth you sacrificing everything, especially family, but if love is really that special, then maybe it will give us another chance to be together, even though it may maybe it can only happen in another life when we're both cats, says Romeo. Is that... Did you just quit vanilla sky at me? I can't believe you did that. That's hilarious that you said that. You know, I hate that movie. You, It's a great movie. How the hell did I manage to fall in love with you again? Both of them start laughing together, continuing to all of the laughter drains into simple smiles. A simple, beautiful curve on their lips that shows a deeper meaning. Only for the two of them. I love you, says Romeo. I love you too, I guess, <laughs> answers Juliet. They sit closer now while holding hands. Juliet puts her head on Romeo's shoulder. Is it worth it, she asks. For now, right at this moment, it's totally worth it. But whether that feeling will last as time goes by, as more people find out about it, I don't know. Juliet sighs quietly. Life sucks sometimes. Life sucks most of the time. That's why I want to make this moment last forever, if that is even possible. It is possible if we believe it. Is that what the weird book taught you, <laughs> Romeo laughs? Shut up, Julia answers and pinches his hand. They stay silent again for a while. Hey, kiss me. The words come from Juliet. Romeo doesn't really know how to react to that. Why? I've heard that people say that a kiss is a magical thing. It can stop time or take you to the future in an instant. Mm -hmm. I've heard that story. I always thought it was silly though. The situation we're stuck in is pretty silly too, you know. Good point, he allows. Well made. So, so. They stare at each other. As they lean in, they close their eyes. When their lips touch for the first time, it's the strangest sensation either of them have ever felt. Everything feels so magical. It feels as if, as if, as if time has stopped only for them. As if they're in an infinite loop of that exact moment to be continued. Whew, made it. I really like the Romeo and Juliet story. There's so many good stories and um, I like that the story is like built up and there's a lot of character development in that story. Um, however, it is long and I do know it takes a lot of time in the beginning of the episode so I try and speed through it but let's get back to the action and find out what happened to Gala I'm hoping it's a Gala and a Hyde episode <laughs> that's my bet okay I need to I need something to drink now there you are you're unemployed don't waste your money on coffee shop drinks that is so weird coming from the coffee shop owner I know you've been a regular for years if you only need the vibes of the place just right here no I can't do that you don't have any customers tonight. What would I do if this place went bankrupt? It won't happen. How can you be so sure? Just take this tap water and go do your work, okay? But... See? There's a customer coming right now. So don't you worry about me. It's the Kagala and Hyde episode. <laughs> I'm like dancing my chair. I'm so excited. <laughs> Hi, Gala. What's wrong? I know you're a man of a few words, but this is maybe pushing it a bit. Freya, Emma, I'm truly very sorry for what happened yesterday. Gala, hey, it's all right. No one got hurt, right? And the coffee shop's fine. Don't think about it too much, Gala. Like Freya said, no casualties and no problems with the coffee shop. I still need to redeem myself for the mess I made and the scare I gave you. I'm sure there's something I can do. Hmm. Well, why don't you buy something for the lady here? I'm sure she'll appreciate it. Hey, what do you mean? Do you want anything to drink, Freya? No, it's just, it's all right, Carla. I insist. You don't have to. Please, just accept it. At least it'll help me stop feeling so guilty, at least a little. All right, all right. I wouldn't mind a coffee, not an espresso, mind you. Something with a little less of a kick. You know how to make a sugar and spice? The one with cinnamon? Yes. A cup of sugar and spice, please. Coffee. Cinnamon. Is this sugar and spice? I literally have no clue what sugar and spice is. I guess we're trying to discover the last couple of combinations. We haven't tried this one, I don't think. Less of a kick. Sugar and spice. What 
What you put in sugar and spice? It's coffee. And she said cinnamon, right? But is it double coffee and cinnamon? What do we think? Hmm. I did coffee, cinnamon, honey, right? So let me try honey, cinnamon. I think it makes sense, right? Cinnamon spicy, honey sweet. That's my logic. Mm. It's always the combination, man. Always gets me. Sugar and spice for the lady with the vice. Hey! Oh well, I won't complain. Thank you, Gala. Don't mention it. Emma, are you sure there's nothing I can do for you? You don't have to do anything, Gala. It's fine. But to be honest, I'm curious. What happened yesterday? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you usually stay indoors during full moon, don't you? I usually do. But there was an emergency at the hospital yesterday. What well, kind of emergency? Hmm. The hospital was really packed yesterday. And after that announcement, announcement, the one saying that a replacement government issued fury receptive will be available soon. Releasing that news on the day of the full moon was just stupid. So many restless werewolves came asking about the sensitive, which isn't ready yet, and the announcement said it wasn't ready, just that it was coming soon. So you think people read the whole article? They only saw the headline or glanced at it and the news stall, and they went straight to the hospital. I don't blame them though. Finding out that the only publicly available sensitive is dangerous is difficult for some people. I ended up having to explain to a dozen of werewolves. I even had to put some rogue werewolves in isolation rooms. It's that bad, huh? Yeah, to the point that we ran out of rooms to put them in. That's why at the end of my shift, I left immediately. Normally, I'd have asked a friend to lock me up in one of the isolation rooms, of course, but I couldn't, so I rushed right back to my apartment. But it was too late. Thankfully, I was in this area, and I managed to force myself to come to your place. Gala, excuse me for asking this. Yes. But you didn't hurt anyone on the way here, right? As far as I remember? No. But I didn't see any blood on my clothes. That's good to hear. This sounds overly confident considering what happened yesterday. But I have enough control to make sure I don't hurt anyone. As long as I have something to direct my fury towards. Usually I end up destroying stuff around me. Or worst case hurting myself. Despite all of that, I'm still glad that no one got hurt. Always looking for the more positive side, aren't you? Just doing my job. Thanks, both of you. I really mean it. But please, if there's anything I can do to pay that, I mean, if there's anything I can do to help, please don't hesitate to ask me straight away. I will do. In the meantime, can I order a drink? Sure. What are you having? The same as yesterday. Okay. Coffee. No. It wasn't coffee. It was tea. Ginger milk. Tea, ginger milk. Or tea, milk, ginger. Oh, I don't know. Why am I so bad at this? I could have checked, but. Hmm, that was the wrong one. Um, tea, milk, ginger. Man, why am I so bad at that? I just can't. I've got bad memory when it comes to stuff like this. Nice. And you're. I know someone pointed out there was a heart and a werewolf thing. But I guess it's because it's a special brew. Thank you. The drink that saved me, once again, thank you. For helping me find this drink. By the way, Gala, now that you can be 100% sure that the drink is your natural sedative, why don't you put it in a bottle and carry it with you everywhere? That's the plan. It has to be warm though. I can use the vacuum for flask, I suppose. I'll give it a try next full moon. Don't worry Freya, I'm going to stay at my place for the next full moon. Not taking any risks, before I can make sure how effective that remedy is. Phew! That was a big slam. What the... Rachel? What's going on? Ha! What else? Your father? Of course. Why the hell was- what the hell was he thinking? Coming backstage at Catchella just to get into an argument with my manager. Huh? Before we continue, Emma, a cafe latte please. A cafe latte is... coffee milk milk. Uh, 
and last it up. We're gonna do a very oh I can't draw today. Can you guess what emoji I'm trying to draw? And if you can guess it, comment down below. <laughs> you have a lot is ready. Thanks. How did he manage to get backstage? He told security he was my father and he messaged me about coming beforehand. He said he was just going to wish me luck. So I told him to let him in, of course. He's still my father. Things were nice at first. Then my manager came and... Ugh. I don't know why he hates him so much. It's showbiz. I'm mature enough to know what's good and what's bad for me. What happened after that? Mr. Lesser told the security guards to kick him out. He's still allowed in the festival area. I saw him in the crowds. Did the concert go well at least? Oh, oh yeah. Other than the arguments backstage, everything was great. I was the first one to play it on the main stage. Usually no one pays much attention to whoever's on first, but there were thousands of people in the audience during my session. Nice. So you don't need to be at the event anymore after this? Not really. I did my stage time. And then there was this press conference after my show. After show press conference? Yeah, the pre-show was done yesterday. Today was a small one. There were almost a dozen journalists who wanted to interview me, so we decided to do a mini conference. Good for you. You're totally back in the game, huh? I guess I am. Thanks to Mr. Lester. I would say it's because of you, but your manager's probably worked some of his influence too. <laughs> so, why are you here? Ugh. Because of Dad, of course. I told him to come here this evening. We need to set things straight. He needs to stop messing with my manager so much. And because this evening is the only time we can meet, I can't go to the party Mr. Lester is holding. What party? He's hosting, he's hosting a party for the VIPs and artists he manages at a club in Beltan. It's okay for you to go to the party without a guardian? I'm 18, remember? I'm an adult. Yeah, but you can only enter some clubs if you're 21. Not this time, because Mr. Lester's my manager and it's his party. Hmm. I'm not sure about that. It's true. No, I know you can go and you can do that by using his name, but I don't think he should do that with you. Why? I'm an at. No, you're not Rachel. Have you ever been to one of Lester's parties? Well, no. You have? Not personally. But I've heard stories. What stories? He knows how to party. That's good then. Hmm. That's not necessarily a good thing. Knowing how to party might mean something else entirely. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You'll find out. Especially if you keep Lester on as your manager. Personally, I don't mind wild parties. But inviting an underage person to his party? That might be a bit too far. But, um, huh? What the hell? Oh no! Dad! What? Rachel, is that Mr. Hendry? Yes, Dad! What happened? Emma, can you get him... Can you get a cup of milk for him, please? Just milk? Just milk? Meow. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> he tips it off. Cute. Thank you. Dad, please hold on. Can somebody help me call an ambulance, please? They're on the way. I've contacted the hospital. Thank you. I've also contacted our Nekobimi expert personally. She's off shift right now, but she's also on the way. Thank you so much. I don't know what might have happened without your help. Don't mention it. Here they come. I'll go with you. Okay. Oh boy. That was really something, huh? Yeah. Two days in a row. An emergency at your place. Well, at least some people think of your place as they go to when they need help. You're right. It's not every day you look at things from the bright side. Haha. <laughs> well, I'm one of your coffee shop disciples, alright? So I kind of understand them. I hope Hendry's alright. Me too. At least he's in good hands now. What's your plan for the rest of the night? Well, 
that was all pretty hectic but i need to continue writing thank you for take your time and place take your time and place take your time and place that sounds weird take your time and place then will do and that is the end of the episode thank you so much for watching and i hope you guys are enjoying this sudden wind of excitement in the arcs that we are exploring i'm assuming Bailey's and lewis arc is done we've just started to devolve into um rachel and henry's arc and gala's arc is kind of in a, like a middle phase in my opinion like we've just experienced this fury and we're waiting for some kind of conversation to happen between him and Hyde probably discussing it or maybe that was the end of the arc very sudden if it was in my opinion I would have expected it to be a little more developed for Gala since they've been building up about this drink and you've, been, you've had multiple attempts and for Freya to finish her book her arc is also like progressing as well and who else is there? There's Georgie who we haven't seen in a while and we have not spoken to Hyde but he's away to do some modeling in Seoul if I'm not mistaken anyways I shall see you all in the next episode of Azuru Plays Coffee Talk so make sure you like and subscribe to let me know that you're enjoying the series and I can't wait to show you the remainder of the game